Welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at the AMX, the last new airframe of the patch. Now sure we have the J11 and the F15J that I haven't covered yet, but I, I think those are minor tweaks. This is an actual new airframe. The AMX is something that we haven't seen before. It is a strike fighter. It can be quite effective as a fighter, which is what we are going to be doing today as per usual. But I do want to quickly look at the loadout and what you can expect from it. For the outer pylons, you can only carry the AIM-9L, so you don't have to sacrifice anything, which is great. And then for the outer pylon on the wing, we have either laser-guided bombs, we have dumb bombs, we have drag bombs, we have napalm bombs or rocket pods. And then for the inner wing pylons, we essentially have more of the same. So you can carry two paveways instead of one, two rocket pods instead of one, and so on. Really nothing to show here. Now, if you are going for the dumb bomb options or the rocket pods, you can carry more in the middle. But I would personally go for laser guided because it means that, well, you have more accuracy and you can hit more. Unless you are base bombing, of course, then you won't really need a targeting pod. But I think for ground RB and just overall use, I would personally go with the laser guided ones. If you don't, you can carry a few more. And then the other side is, of course, mirrored. And it's the exact same thing as I just showed you. Now, to just give you an indication of how small this thing really is, these bombs are essentially as big as your fuselage. And they will definitely impact your performance. The AMX is good at high speed. And the second you start going below like 800, you turn into a massive shit bus. And this is a bit of a reference to that movie where, you know, they're driving a bus. And if they go below 55 miles per hour, the bus explodes. And that's essentially what this thing is. The second you get slow, you are dead. This thing is not good at all once you start going slow. And if you are fast, it holds its speed very well. It turns quite okay, but it's very prone to wing ripping. So you have to kind of tiptoe around these issues. I'm not going to tell you that if you tiptoe around these issues, this plane suddenly becomes amazing. But I had a pretty good time in it. And... I had a, probably the most fun in this thing over all the other vehicles. Top tier is not my forte, you guys know this, but I want to review those things anyway, so you know what and what not to grind. Lastly, or second to last, I should say, we have the Vulcan over here. Now, you only have 400 rounds, and because it is a Vulcan, you need to spool it up. And when you have to spool it up, it's a little bit harder to do short bursts, so you will run through these rounds very, very fast. And this is by no means a carry plane, which is of course to be expected considering it's a goddamn attacker. And then now actually lastly, it doesn't have an afterburner. So when I took it out the first time, I took it out with 20 minutes and fuel tanks. To then see that I don't have an afterburner. So I instantly jade out, put it on min fuel. And on the min fuel it's about 10 minutes which is more than sufficient. But I just run the fuel tanks so I can use about 2 to 3 minutes upon taking off. Give me a little bit more staying power throughout the match because I'll have 3 minutes extra fuel. Which doesn't impact your performance all that much. But it's very helpful to making it back to base for example. That is of course if you don't run out of ammo or blow your wings off before you ever run out of fuel. And here we are on the giant volcano map. You better feel at home on this map because it's all you're going to be seeing for the next 3 patches. At least if you're flying any type of jet. Fortunately I kind of like the map. Unfortunately it's a giant clusterfuck because no one knows where to go because of the position of the airfields. A little bit annoying, but we'll learn to cope with it. Here's an F4EJ. We are going to be engaging it, hoping that he's not looking forward because he just passed my teammates. But he actually is looking at us. No big deal. We should be able to pull behind him and get ourselves a pretty easy kill. Not sure what happened to the recording there, but we are back. We are going to be engaging the rest of the game because the F4EJ just kind of got away from us. So how are we going to engage the rest of this match? Now this is the second, I mean the first game that I've played in the thing. So I'm still trying to figure out how everything works. I'm not sure how it works at high speed, at low speed, if it holds speed well, if it compresses. So I'm going to just kind of touch and feel and see what we are going to be getting. SU-25 is flaring. I'm not going to pull into that. I know I'm nearing my top speed at least, which probably means that I'm going to compress. And even though my pullout game is pretty strong, if I do it at that kind of speed, I'm probably going to rip my wings off and I'm not quite ready for that. So instead, we are just going to continue on straight and engage all the guys that are in front of us. Now, this guy is flaring. He is turning in. And that means that I'm not going to shoot the A9L. It's just going to be a waste. He's just going to flare it very easily. We hold the trigger down and we shoot him out of the air. But that right there, that little shot, cost me 75 rounds. Which is already about 20% of my total ammo. So you really need to be careful with that gun. Because you are going to be running out in no time if you're not paying attention to it. I could engage the MiG-21, but he's faster than me in a plane that will go faster than me. 
So there's absolutely no chance of me catching him. So I'd rather just fly towards the middle of the map and make myself useful instead of trying to engage one guy that I can't kill anyway. And then I kind of get pins up. Tornado forced me to turn a little bit into him, making me sacrifice all my position against the MiG-21. And he's going to have a relatively easy time to just kill me here. Right now he's slower than me, but he will catch me in the long run. And I can't reverse him because he will lose more speed than us. Luckily, we have a goon in our squad that slams him out of the air. And just in time, because if he was half a second later, I wouldn't have looked forward there and I would have been one with the ground. We then fly back to our original destination, the middle of the map in the giant furball with three su 25s a JA-35XS and a JA-37. Who do we engage first? Well, preferably one of the fighters, but it doesn't really matter as long as I go for the one that's closest to me. Go ahead on, we miss it. Not a massive issue, but I do need to make sure that we start killing someone. Short burst, squeezes balls, plane explodes. On to the next one, J35, he's compressing, we turn into him, do the same thing to him, balls are drained, back to the hangar. J37 comes in from the right over here and he's engaging someone else so I have the ability to just kind of lob a missile at him and hope that he doesn't see it because he's right now going vertical for Hazy. Unfortunately, he actually does see it. Fortunately, he's really too slow to really do anything. So we slam him out of the air and we go towards the next guy. Don't have the time to pull into the head-on right there. I'm going slow enough to the point where I can dodge them rather freely. But I need to be careful that I don't go too much slower. Because right here you're going to see it. I'm going a little bit slow and I instantly turn into a fucking bus. This thing just starts falling out of the air. And it's basically impossible to keep your flight performance up. Now, I'm not going to be shooting a missile at this guy. Really no use to do so. Uh, but he's dead. He's crit. Shoot another burst. Set him on fire. Flat spin. Directly into a tree. Game over, on to the next one. And we have a, again an AJ-37 as well as a J-35XS. And you're going to see a lot of these planes. Why you might ask? Well, the Gripen just got added. So everyone is flying this thing. Compress a little bit, not really able to pull into the shot. Uh, they're just going to fly away from me, which is perfect because I'm about to be engaged by an FG-1. And the FG-1 has a lot more power than us. However, because we hold our energy so well at high speed, we are able to actually contest him and stay with him for the most part. Now, we don't want this to go super prolonged. But we should have the position to just kind of sit on his ass here. So I lock him up. No real use to shoot it right now. Shoot a short burst. We managed to crit him. And I'm just going to missile him. Because I have a teammate right here to of course lick up my kill. Because I damaged him. He's flaring all over the place. Missile flops all over the place. Nothing matter. Hits it anyway. Because he didn't cut his afterburner. Would you look at that? It's another match on the volcano map. You're going to be seeing a lot of this map people. I warned you. I wasn't kidding. So we are going to dive on the J-35. Kind of just praying that he doesn't see us. I'm diving on him. I'm turning after him. He's turning away from us. I thought I wasn't going to have a shot. But then he pulls back in and he's going to give me a very free one. However, we miss it. We shoot a little bit too high. I'm not going to contest that. I'm reaching the speed range where I just kind of die. And I'm also getting engaged by a Vigan now. So I'm just going to leave him be. Engage the Vigan instead. But the Vigan also doesn't want to smoke. And he simply runs away. J35 coming back. Which is kind of rough. I don't want to fight this guy right now. I don't have the speed to do so. And he just has a much better airframe. J37 pulls back in. But at this kind of speed. Yeah I ain't missing that. Back to the hangar you go. And the J35 does as well. We are free now to kind of do whatever we want. But we need to make sure that we actually don't get engaged bomb above. Or some guy that's much faster than us. Because right now we aren't that fast. And I see a Harrier. And it's a Harrier that has flares. But I'm hoping that he's not paying attention to me. However he is. So we are going to try to get behind him. See if he can maybe get a missile off. Get it to track. He is flaring but it's a close range shot against the Harrier. Which is pretty hot. And luckily the missile thinks so too. And he gives him a kiss right on his bum hole. Then for the last game we have a J7E and I really want that thing to be dead. The J7E is a very dangerous plane. Especially if you are playing something like this. Because he just rinses you in every regard. So I think to myself I'll shoot a missile off. Get like a sneaky kill. But he starts flaring. He shoots a missile off. My missile doesn't track. But I'm still on him. We can catch him because I'm together with an F5. So I'm thinking about killing him right here. To make sure that we can alleviate the end game problem. Of having to deal with a J7E. J35 shows up, so I need to break off. I'm going to make sure that I actually stay alive. We are starting to get a little bit slow. So I am simply going to exit the area now. And see if I can come back later. Or if a situation arises where I can re-engage them. I'm going back to 850. The J7E is not very fast. He's flying away from us. 
But I can't really go for him without giving my position up against the J-35. So the J-35 flies in front of us. We set him on file. And he is essentially out of the match. We then switch on over to the J-7. Hold fire to see if the F-5 actually kills him. He does not. So we shoot the missile just after he passes. And I could have used my guns there. But I'd be playing the game for like 10 hours straight at this point. And my brain was completely fried. So there are some mistakes here and there. I should have just used my gun. But you know, a missile is much more ammo conservative if you know it's 100% going to hit. The J-35 that's on fire without an engine of course gets stolen. And I notice that the F-5C is Dutch. So I welcome him with our Dutch tradition of calling him a dog with all types of diseases. The Dutch culture is such a warm and welcoming one. It's honestly just beautiful to watch. So we have some guys in front of us. We have an A-5C, a J-35A which doesn't have flares and a J-35XS which has a very little amount. But we don't have any missiles left, so that's really not going to come into play at all. I'm going to engage the J-35XS first. I'm going to try to kind of sneak on to him. Maybe I can get an easy shot off if he isn't paying attention. He, uh, he's just too fast. I try to get a shot off. We don't manage to hit it. But then he starts pulling in. And now I can actually pull in and we just take his wing clean off. Do want to make sure that he doesn't kind of turn in and shoot all the missiles off. But he bails out. And we are completely fine now. We have a J-35XS in orbit. And then the other two guys that I mentioned earlier. And it is going to turn into a little bit of a furball. Now you do see a lot of blue names around us. But those are actually quite far away. So the fight here is actually pretty equal. It's about 3v3. However, I'm in an attacker. And they have three pretty good planes here. So I do want to be careful. I'm going to firstly engage the J-35. Because he is actually presenting a bit of a head-on. Shoot the rounds off. Don't actually manage to hit him. And I want to be careful here because I can't contest any of these planes in a fair fight. So I'm trying to make sure that I come in from good angles and I position myself in a way that I can defend as well as attack at the same time. Now I am feeling extra petty because of what he did earlier. So I'm trying to let him die in some way without costing me the game. Unfortunately as of right now I kind of have to help him out. So we are going to try to end up pulling in behind the J-35. We don't get the shot quite yet right here. And then I notice the A5C coming in and I'm just going to use him as bait. I'm going to dive out. I'm going to go underneath him. And now I'm on the 6 of both of them. And then I have two guys pretty slow in front of me. I'm going to hope that the A5 and the J35 commit to this fight. So that he both dies and that I get two easy kills. A5 breaks off. Other J35 comes in full speed. We crit the first one but he's still on the 6. A5 turns around instantly. So I'm going to use the ground here to dodge both of them at the same time. And well... What can you say? Diseased dogs don't live that long. So we are going to break off, get a little bit of separation here to get away from the other two guys. But at this kind of speed, I am never going to be reversing a J-35. I'm going to need some help from my goon Hazy here, who is coming in and makes it uh, rather close. I think it just flew through like seven trees, but hey, he scared a J-35. He survived. All good in my book. The J-35 in the background is severely crit. Probably killed a fuel tank or something. I'm not sure. But he is not looking very hot. He's probably going to end up crashing relatively soon here. And the other J-35 is so busy going for Hazy that... Well, I might be able to just kind of pull underneath him and shoot him down. I don't want to pull too hard because I want to try and keep my speed. It's both to get a little bit closer to him. And secondly, to have a bit of a safety net if he sees me last second. And he tries to go head on, for example... That I do have the ability to at least somewhat dodge him. At this point he is too focused. He's too slow. And he is too close to this gun to not get sent back to the hangar. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you all for watching. And you'll see me in the next one.